used. Medical marijuana in the States means use of marijuana uh, against uh, diseases. Now, from my point of view, medical marijuana is not well defined. It should be better defined. If you take aspirin, you want to take 500 milligrams of aspirin. You don't want to say, well, I don't know how much I'm getting, 20 milligrams or 2 grams. I don't see any difference why one should have a different attitude when works with, working with marijuana. Uh, and if marijuana can have anything between 2% and 20% THC, I don't think that this is the right way to do it. American medical marijuana laws are not well defined. Advocates say that today in California, there are more than 200,000 physician-sanctioned pot smokers and nearly 300 dispensaries. U.S. federal law enforcement believes this creates an atmosphere of overly permissive use and quasi-legalization. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Yourself? Good, thanks. I was looking for something that could help me with sleeping. Okay. Well, you'd want to go with your most indica, and these are our three high grades. Which one would you recommend? Um, I like to go for buds and less stem, so I'd go with that nice one right there. Okay. $150 and a brief examination could get you a physician's recommendation for medical marijuana in California. All right. You're all set. Have Thank a great you. day. The medical use laws change from county to county and from town to town. In California's Bay Area, Oakland is perhaps the most tolerant. Here in the shadow of City Hall is a nine square block area newly dubbed as Oaksterdam. Richard Lee is affectionately known as the mayor of Oaksterdam. Hey guys. Hey Carl. A broken back left him in a wheelchair 18 years hey, ago. He uses and advocates medical marijuana, See seeing it as more than just medicine for the body. Won their first softball game this last week. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's our star shortstop, right? We saw this area of Oakland that needed revitalization, just very run down, a lot of empty storefronts. And so we saw that the cannabis industry, the cannabis businesses could work in this area and help improve it and bring uh, economy back to the area. According to Lee, the gross sales of medical marijuana in Oaksterdam were over $24 million in 2003, meaning nearly $3 million in sales tax would have been added to city coffers. But under U.S. federal law, the growing, selling, and use of marijuana is illegal, and federal law trumps state and local laws. So despite widespread popularity, there is still a conflict. DEA does not make the laws. We do not make the laws. We enforce the laws. Javier Pena is a 24-year veteran in the war against drugs. He's in charge of the DEA's San Francisco Field Division. Any form of marijuana selling, growing, possessing, cultivating, whatever you want to do, it is very simple. Under federal law, it is all illegal. Well, they have closed down quite a few clubs, and it has been somewhat of a setback, a counterattack, but I think we're holding strong, and that time, you know, will win out. We don't go after the, the terminally ill, the, the person out there that's sick, dying. We, we, we don't go after that. We don't go after the guy who's smoking out in the street corner. We go after the, the organizations that are supplying this illegal uh, narcotics. And that includes dispensaries. To help people stay out of trouble with authorities, Lee invented Oaksterdam University. The first classes you will be required to take are politics and legal issues. Wait a second, hey, are you a cop? Hey, hey what the hell? Stand up. Hey, man. Under arrest. Is this entrapment? We have lawyers come in and talk about what the laws are and aren't. How you doing, ma'am? You're high? Profiling is entirely legal, okay? There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. Then we move on to cooking, hash making, uh, bud tending. Just above those nodes, you cut at a 45 degree angle. We have a can of business to learn how to start a, a dispensary or production facility. 
Lee's business may all be illegal according to the feds, but some Oakland elected officials and citizens believe Oaksterdam is working. What's up, dude? How you doing? So we pay payroll taxes, health insurance for employees, everything that other businesses do. Head on, man. Head on back. We have a very good relationship with the other merchants. They know that we bring in a lot of business. We create a lot of traffic. So what are you looking for today? Okay. We've got our hashes on the front page. Second page is our medium grade and low grade one star. And our $11 puppy bag. We also have high grades on the back page. 44 for an eight. Champagne's our best in the house today. Anything else for you? That's it. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Man. Have Thank a good you. night. Since they uh, allowed us to be able to have a marijuana card and, and purchase marijuana from a safe environment, it's really helped rather than trying to purchase marijuana out on the streets and where it's really hectic and uh, it's dangerous. I mean, you have to be terrified from the, the people after that you purchase it from because you don't really know them off the streets and you have to deal with the situation if you get caught with the police and that kind of thing. So this has made it much more convenient and civilized. Our three high grades being prosecuted or being investigated by federal government is always a concern. I can help who's next. For me, it's worth it to be involved and hopefully be helping um, Oakland patients as much as possible. Papers in there for you. It's worth the risk for me. Since 1996, 11 other American states have passed similar compassionate use laws. This trend has changed the business of marijuana in America. The heartland of pot cultivation is upstate California in the Emerald Triangle of Humboldt, Mendocino, and Trinity Counties. California grows more pot than any other state in America with a reputation for superior quality. And the revenues far outpace the California wine industry. This is where hippie growers took root decades ago, subverting the law and supplying weed to America. A marijuana farmer has invited us to his plot, a rare opportunity. The growers here remain highly secretive and suspicious of any strangers. There is too much at risk. Federal agents can seize crops. Patch pirates can steal them. Loss of freedom loss of profits. We've agreed to hide this farmer's identity. I've been growing weeds since 79, that's 30 years. Oh, it's great. It's, it's turned me into a farmer. This does not appear like a farm in the traditional sense. There are no clear cultivated rows, no wide vistas, no heavy machinery. Just potted plants seeking out sun among the native pines. But the horticulture is as earnest and sophisticated as any mainstream farmers. Starting the seeds in February. And then it's the whole process. The hot summer, looking for sun, hoping for sun. And then there's always the steps, the harvesting, the drying, the packaging, the, then the more lucrative side of things, hopefully. It's, you know, it's a great way to have an income. Oh. <laughs> the value of the U.S. marijuana crop has increased sharply in the past 10 years. Some believe it's because of medical marijuana use. One assessment puts the 2006 California crop at 22 million plants, a tenfold increase from just 15 years before. These have got to go today. Oh, I'm under pressure. It's early autumn. Oh, These plants are ready for harvest. See all the brown? In a week, brown, uh, they'll be ready hairs. for market. It wants to go, and there's, uh, there's ways to tell when it's ready. You can see the crystals. I don't know if you could get it on your camera. We're in a kind of a uh, pressurized situation because of the forthcoming rain. Today, some pot farms are multi-generational with grown children going into the family business. I never thought it would get to, get to this. It's getting better all the time. And the family business may one day be legitimate as marijuana laws change, though it remains illegal today. 